Okay. And here we go. Three, two, one. Hey! <laughs> Just to throw you out there. Throw Brad off. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one. Smile. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Cars and Coffee with me, Kenny Brown, except I'm not really here today. I'm taking the weekend off to spend some time with our grandkids, but in my place, well, not really my place because it's still going to be me, they prepared some special videos for you that I think you're really going to enjoy. This is going to be some pretty cool stuff, so sit back, have a cup of coffee, and I'll see you next week. Okay. So we'll keep that one. Endurance racing is a battlefield. In 24 hours, mechanics and drivers hammer their machines and themselves. Mistakes and miscalculations in this grueling environment create catastrophe and defeat. Only the best survive. It's a world Kenny Brown understands. In 1986, Kenny's reputation for performance brought an offer from Steve Celine to build racing versions of the Celine Mustang for the punishing SCCA Professional Street Stock Endurance Series. One short year later, Kenny Brown and the Celine Mustangs sat on the pole 57% of the time. They won an unprecedented 71% of all races. They blew traditional street stock champion Porsche completely away. All four SCCA National Championship titles belong to Kenny Brown and the Celine Mustang race team. In 1988, Kenny Brown packed 100,000 miles of intense testing, development, and proven race winning experience and moved into the consumer market. Confirmed as a premier designer and builder of late model high performance Fords, Kenny formed Project Industries, a company committed to his long-standing principles of power, performance, quality, and value. Project Industries Mustangs, special project cars, performance parts, and motorsport services continue Kenny Brown's winning tradition, delivering power, prestige, and pleasure to every customer. You can't get any more value for your money than you can with, uh, with Kenny Brown. He won't do anything. That, uh, that won't work in the car. They answered my questions, and uh, they, they were terrific. Can't beat it. It was all real, really handled well, and very professional, and you could talk. And I can tell you, as a driver, it, 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 was, it was unbelievable. I mean, it makes you grin from ear to ear. <laughs> I'm just thinking about it. Project Industries' balanced race-tested machines set the standard for performance cars of the 90s. Precision engineering guides their passionate soul. Normal mass production tolerances do not exist in Kenny Brown's hand-built engine. Each piece is cut, polished, and balanced. This is the kind of engineering you can feel in your head, in your hands, and in your heart. Motor Trend magazine describes Kenny Brown as a modern-day Carroll Shelby, building cars with more performance than Carroll Shelby ever dreamed of. Based on total performance and price, these cars beat every car in their class. Kenny Brown Mustangs are American muscle machines that work and win. Machines specifically tailored to the needs and tastes of individual owners. The feeling that you get from driving one of these cars is, it's hard, it's impossible to describe, you've got to feel it. And we strive to build the finest cars, performance cars in the world, but what we really do is we fulfill dreams. I would say that our, our customer satisfaction uh, as far as product has got to be the highest in the automotive industry. Kenny Brown's exclusive 5-liter Mustangs are available to you in two series, breathtaking world-class XS supercars and super series high-performance sports models. Images and accounts of these attention-grabbing modern-day muscle cars appear in Auto Week, Car and Driver, Motor Trend, Super Ford, Super Mustangs, and many others. Powerful and sophisticated, Kenny Brown Mustangs are all-American, corner-carving bad boys with impeccable manners. These cars arm you with one of the most aggressive power-to-weight ratios available in the world. XS Series cars bring you maximum high-energy sensations in a sleek and seductive package. 
In one of these cars, you carry a big stick with near nuclear power. They are legal but lethal killers capable of shooting down anything in their path. Performance tests and experienced drivers rate the All-American XS as a world-class supercar. Super Mustangs magazine reports the XS is the highest performance brand new specialty Mustang sold on the planet. Kenny did not design these cars for faint-hearted or timid people. The XS is for people who lust for real American muscle, power, and performance, free from the fickle and finicky characteristics found in eccentric foreign cars. This is an American muscle car capable of intimate relationships, a car that knows how to dance with you in traffic or wild and free, a car that works best with a demanding partner. The individuals who drive these cars aren't looking for scoops or wings or stick-on stripes. I mean, they want, they want to have the power anytime they want it. I mean, they want it to be there, and they don't need to tell everybody that they've got it because they got it. Kenny's very popular Super Series Mustangs are affordable, true, high-performance sports cars. Offering the best performance value in their class, Super Series Mustangs share many of the same special technical advantages found on the XS models. Kenny engineers his cars to provide you high energy enjoyment in all environments. These are tools that cut through extraordinary or everyday driving situations with features that meet your specific needs. The MX-300, for example, delivers silk smooth, reliable power with a naturally aspirated hand-built engine. Extraordinary handling and braking performance are standard features. These cars transform a trip home from the office or a turn on a racetrack into an unequaled experience in stress management. Motor Trend describes the 300 as rippling with confidence, machinery that pays promptly on demand. A payoff owners find on the highway or on the racetrack. Kenny strongly recommends that when you own a car packing his kind of power and performance, you invest a little time discovering the true potential of your investment. If this does not bring you exhilaration, a sense of power and control, nothing will. Kenny is well known for his regular work with customers at Bobby Ray Hall's Track Time Driving Schools, which provide professional one-on-one -on -one instruction in the student's own car. Kenny's cars impress without distress. A quality Ford service technician can effectively and economically keep them fit. Special project cars such as the short wheelbase Thunderbird and high performance Lincolns illuminate Kenny Brown's broad engineering and production talents. On the T-Bird, Kenny shortened the standard wheelbase, re-engineered the platform, and transformed a factory sports coupe into a world-class high performance touring car. Car and driver calls Kenny's version of a T-Bird a full-blown sex symbol. Tailored to suit the owner's performance needs, these birds are predators. Raptors with a reputation. The brakes, the wheels, the tires, the power are a unit. I mean, everything works collectively to make a better home. Many of the same exclusive Kenny Brown performance parts employed in his world-class supercars and sports models are available to you through the Kenny Brown performance parts division. Owners who want to make genuine performance improvements can fit their car with Ken's advanced performance products. Kenny Brown Performance Parts offers super and ultra street cages, chassis stiffening kits, brake kits, and many other exclusive pieces found integrated into his conversion cars. Kenny engineers every product to stand the heat of hard driving. Kenny Brown's world-class American supercars are the culmination of careful work spanning three decades. He worked, he raced, he learned, and he developed an outstanding reputation for leading-edge technology, impeccable preparation, and winning results. Kenny has prepared winning race machines for drivers such as George Fulmer, Scott Pruitt, Pete Halsmer, Parnelli Jones, and Steve Saline. Top-class drivers in top-class cars are a Kenny Brown tradition. You put it into a turn and, and it just sticks where you put it. I think it's that track experience. He knows what works and what doesn't work. And trust me, this car works. If you're in a world-class supercar with world-class performance, it's durable, dependable, reliable, and a good value, we're the only people that have it. Investing in a world-beating Kenny Brown product is a simple affair. Call us up. Talk about it. Project Industries works with you and for you. 
Kenny Brown's cars are very special handcrafted machines. Please don't wait to order one. Kenny's brand of quality and service takes time. He designs and builds his machines for buyers who won't settle for less than the best. People who crave and appreciate power, performance, quality, and value. The sooner you order your Kenny Brown car, the sooner you will join a very select group of individuals who own the finest handcrafted high-performance sports cars in the world. Wow, that was a real blast from the past. I hope you enjoyed it because I thought it was pretty cool.
for an old guy, I can really get around the track. But it's not just me. It's how I build my cars, how I set up my cars, that really makes driving a dream. And like I say, hey, I go pretty good for an old guy. Smile. No, I'm counting count myself because I counted three seconds afterwards that time. No, you didn't. It was a half a second. It was not. I counted three. <laughs> One, two, three. Okay. Well, I'm fast Smile. out there. <laughs> Roll. <laughs> That's what I need to do. Ready? Three, Smile. two. No, you don't. You count. I'll count. Action. Hi, I'm Kenny Brown. We're at the Bear Brakes booth at the PRI show to introduce an exciting new product. The Katie Brown Bear Pro 4R Brake Package for Late Model Mustangs. What we wanted to achieve with this new brake package was professional level braking at club racing prices. Make it really affordable for the average guy for track days or club racing. I mean, there's, there's so many features in here, it's going to be hard for me to remember them all, but I'm, I'm going to try. We'll, we'll start with the caliper. The caliper is a four piston caliper and it's been lightened. Most, uh, most two-piece calipers only have four 3 8 bolts. This has six 7 16 There's a lot of clamping force and a lot of rigidity. Pockets have been moved out. We've got a lot of breathing space, a lot of air. We used ARP studs on the back. It's a radial mount. This caliper is designed for what's called a 25 millimeter brake pad. So the brake pad is almost an inch thick. And even better, it's the same brake pad we use on our six-piston race calipers. It's massive. So more of the features is the rotors. We've gone to an R-Spec rotor, which is seven pounds lighter than a normal rotor. And of course, it's slotted. I only, I only use slotted rotors on track. It's, it's got an aluminum centerpiece, and it's also floated with, with the Belleville washers, so we've got a floating rotor. And the other nice thing is just like on a, on a race car is the brake pads are top loading. You drop the brake pads in, and you just pop them out. I mean, it's just that simple. You don't have to take anything off. I mean, it's like, a, it's like less than a five minute brake change when you're in pits. This is like the big boys have. We got a banjo fitting and of course a stainless steel line still with it. It's got a machine mount uh, that adapts the radial of the caliper right to your spindle. Now currently we've got these available for the S197 2005-2014 Mustangs as well as SN95 which would be 96 to 04 and also Fox body cars that run a uh, 96 to 04 uh, spindle. A little later on we're going to be coming out with a rear version of this which would be pretty exciting because you'll be able to put an entire full race brake package on your Mustang for less than what it would cost just for the front of real race brakes from another competitor, which we won't talk about. Pistons are castellated. That way they don't get as much heat transfer into the calipers as fast. And by being extra thick stainless steel, that also slows down the heat penetration from the, from the brake pads into the caliper and then into the brake fluid. I mean, these brakes will run a lot cooler even though on a racetrack they'll still run pretty hot. And we also will have brake pads and compounds that you can pop in the car, drive it to the track, drive it on track with the same brake pads and drive home without have, ever having to change brake pads. So there's a lot of, lot of variety, a lot of things you can do with these brakes. And you know, the most amazing thing, we've got all this packaged into a brake that's only $39.95. And I gotta say, we're, we're really excited about this. I mean, we're gonna bring professional grade race brakes to the average guy, average track day guy, average club racing guy. We're going to make it affordable and there's nothing there's nothing better on track than a good set of brakes. Now you can find out more information at KennyBrown.com or Kenny Brown Performance on Facebook. Hey, we're recording in here. Now, he's real key. He needs minimum three seconds. Three seconds. Yeah, he needs three and then three at the end. Okay. Okay, here we go.
three, two, one, smile. Hello, all you car gals and guys. This is Kenny Brown, and I want to personally invite you to a really cool event that's coming up. It's my three-day Transform Your Driving Spirits workshop, and it's going to be April 6th, 7th, and 8th, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. And you have to register because this is a special closed event, private event for, for just our people. Uh, but it's it's going to be cool because it, everybody wants to trans improve the driving experience. Well, I can tell you the best way to improve your driving experience is improve your car. Because there's nothing like a car that really drives well. I mean, really drives well. Anybody that's ever driven one of my cars, one of my Kenny Brown cars, will attest to that. I mean, they drive like a dream. And so what I'm going to do is in this three-day, I'm going to share a lot of my cool stuff with you. First, you're going to learn the five critical steps uh, in maximizing your driving experience. And then you're going to learn my five secrets for building great track cars. It kind of worked out, didn't it? So some of the things we'll talk about. Uh, we're going to talk about building your performance platform, which is you're going to find out how important that is and, and how why I drive that into people's heads, uh, building a performance platform. We're going to talk about dialing in your car, adjusting your car, maximum performance, a little bit on driving tips, so some setups, some track prep, uh, kind of all, uh, kind of like a miniature version of the academy, just piled into three days to try to give you more information so you're more informed on transforming your driving experience. And here is what you can expect from the three-day Transforming Driving Experience Workshop. Uh, cars. My philosophy on building cars. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, you know, I started my racing back in the 70s, early 70s, and you know, once you get once you get feel of a real race car on track man there's nothing like it i mean just being able, able you know just being so connected to the car you know going around the corner just feeling the g loads and that car just digging into the asphalt i mean that's just you know i just couldn't get over that and also back in the 70s you know, my main business was working on sports cars uh typically british sports cars uh Italian sports cars and uh, like the, on the Japanese cars, the uh, uh, 240Z and and the uh, and the Nissan 510. And we did a lot of made a lot of improvements on them. And I, you know, I got using U European shocks, and I just love the way they drive because I, I I drive my my pedometer is what tells me if it's a good car or not. So that, that's the kind of like the background. And and for those that haven't been been with us for a while. That crusty old toolbox back there. Uh, that toolbox has been with me for over 40 years. It's been to I think every major racetrack in North America, uh, and that that's my education. That's you know you, you learn you, you do you do that much time uh, working on cars and, and, and racing. You, you kind of figure get a lot of things figured out. So between my, my racing background and my love for driving. Uh, more so and love for how cars feel you know they got you got to have it and if a car, the car has to drive I don't care what it looks like on the outside it's got to drive and that's how I kind of that's that's this the background setting for how I develop my cars and I look at all the things underneath the car that make it work to start with uh, the suspension uh, the shocks the brakes I, I have my, my big philosophy is before you add a lot of power to your car, you need to build the performance platform because that's what I do with my cars. Performance platform is chassis, suspension, wheels, tires, brakes. You get those five things right, and you're going to have a car that just drives like a dream, and that, that's why my cars drive so well. The thing is, when it comes to, like, the suspension, I I made I made a ha I made, not a habit, but I made it a point over the years of study suspension geometry because back in the... Uh, mid 70s you know we were racing open wheel cars and with great engines we actually started out in racing as an engine builder with great engines but we were getting beat by a couple guys that didn't really even have as good a power as we did but they had better chassis and that's kind of like changed my thinking though man maybe we start, better start doing a little chassis work do some chassis work and all of a sudden boom we're right there so that's carried with me all my life when we did the Celine program in 86 uh it was supposed to be pure showroom stock, uh, so we really couldn't change much, but I learned a lot that year. We run a 
just breaks about that big in front and drum brakes in the back for endurance racing. Imagine doing 20, a couple of 24-hour races with teeny little brakes. The easiest way to, to slow the car down is to get back a bumper of a Corvette and let him slow you down. But I learned what we learned in 86, we carried over through the winter 87, we had much better cars. Uh, we upgraded the brakes, the chassis. Uh, on 86 cars, we did do the, the three-point strut tire brakes at Atlanta. SC shape, throw it out, part of the production car. 87, part of the production car. So, and the more I learned from that, I was uh, really lucky to hook up with, with a guy from Ford, the Mustang group, he was on suspensions. And in the evenings, he would work with me on different, uh, you know, trying to improve the geometry. And what I ended up doing, Steve, who was just marvelous at, at getting stuff. Uh, one day I got a call that there was a, there was a uh, package out at the airport for me. Uh, and I went, so I went to, well, it wasn't main airport, it's one of the freight things. And here are three brand new front K members, not a single hole in them. So I took them back and worked all pretty much all night. And in the morning when everybody came back, there were three K members that looked like they were stuck, but every single, every single hole had been moved uh, a little bit in a lot. And you know, nobody would ever know. And uh, the cars turned so much better after that. So it's kind of like I've been at this for a long time, and after that came, I call that Advanced Geometry Suspension Systems, AGS for short. And that carried, that, well, I learned there, carried into AGS-1, and AGS-1 carried into AGS-2, uh, and AGS-2 carried into AGS-3, which is the SN95, and AGS-3.5, which is the IRS SN95, and AGS-4, which is the S197. But each one, I was able to improve the geometry and the chassis. Uh, so when I'm building a car, I mean, you gotta have, you gotta have tires on the ground. So look at how we're we gonna keep all the tires on the ground, uh, get the maximum amount of uh, uh, tire contact. And once I got that, one, once the geometry's done, then I go back to springs and shocks. With all my background in, uh, in, in motorsports and in European cars, I just like the way the European cars ride. They, the, the valving they use, the strategy in valving is so much better. So that, that's some of the only shocks I've been using over the years. I mean, back when there weren't a whole lot of choices, it was off Coney and Bilstein. When I was got, uh, you know, it's just a plethora of choices for like our, our later model cars. Uh, JRZ is is our is our premium shock, and it's uh, it's an amazing package. Uh, JRZ is a company from Holland. And they custom build the shock. I mean, this is not on the shelf product. They, I, we put the order in, they'll custom build the shock for me, package it up, and then ship it next day air. But that, that's kind of our premium shock, and they're amazing. They come in single adjustable, double adjustable, and double with a canister. Uh, everybody that puts them on raves about them, and I rave about them too. That's our premium. We also have like some HR packages. We've got like a track package and a street performance. <clears throat> and we just started something new. We've had. Uh, we had somebody out uh, what in Northwest that uh, her budget couldn't really stretch. She got front grip kit, rear grip kit, but her budget really couldn't stretch uh, to get a uh, full shock package. So I came up with a you know a cost-effective compromise. We got some some yellow conies and some H and R springs that have like a 320 I think 25 pound front spring rate, which is kind of right in the range. In spring rates. You know, if you look at the base spring rate, and I'll talk about the SN90, the S197 is the best example because that's that's spring on shock. Uh, when you put the spring on the control arm, you have to use a motion ratio to calculate the spring rate versus the spring on the shock. But factory cars come in maybe one anywhere from 130 to 160 pound springs in the front. Uh, our street performance, well, the newer cars like the uh, uh, the GT 350s, I think they're up to 190 for the 350 and 240 for the 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 R. I have to, I have a whole sheet on this. I'd have to look. So that that's pretty much you know we're, we're and on the aftermarket stuff, you're not get, going to get much about 1 225, and you have no control over a ride height. That's why we use all you know, I use coilers. But the the uh, my spring philosophy starts. You start out with a you know, 131, let's say 13170 spring on your car. The best you can get in the aftermarket is a, around a 200, 225. My touring package is 350, street performance is 400, intermediate track on 
of street tires is in the 500, 550 range, depending on the driver. And then advanced track on uh, sticky tires is 650. And you think that's a lot from a late Sun Paul and, and uh, World Challenge on Pirelli Slicks. Uh, we were running uh, 850, 950, depending on the track. So it's, it's the more spring you put into a Mustang, the better they turn, the quicker they get. Now, the, the downside of it is the more spring you put in, as you go up in spring rate, your, your window of opportunity for making a mistake shrinks with every level you go up on springs. So by the time you get up to you know, 850 pound springs, you, you really can't make too many mistakes unless you get lightning quick reflexes or a trained racing driver. That's why we keep everybody in that 650 range. It seems to be just a great track a track setup. That's why I run a my car. Uh, so that's kind of how I look at spring race. So, I mean, it's like everything under the car has to do is flat work. That's the, that's the very first thing. And then you get down to brakes. I mean, if you go fast, you have to stop. You know, using a wall or a tree is kind of like a very effective way to stop, but it's not really preferred. And, and what braking is all about, I mean, you're taking a, a Mustang, which is, well, let's say, 3,800 pounds. You're 100, 120 miles down the straightaway. That's 3,800 3, pounds of kinetic mass traveling at 120 miles an hour. That's a lot. So what the, the job of the brakes are, uh, are really in, in, in effort to slow you down. They take kinetic energy and turn it into heat energy. And that's why brakes get so hot. I mean, they're taking all that kinetic energy and turning it into heat energy, which means they're pulling energy out of the car and putting it into your brake rotors. So that's why it's so important to have a good set of brakes. Even if you've got stock brakes and doing track days, you need pads. You've got to have better pads. You've got to have a pad that works within the heat range that the compound was designed for. Because uh, street pads are typically good to maybe, I'm guessing, I don't know this for sure, I'm guessing about 400, pound, 400 degrees, but they're also good down to minus 20. Uh, street performance pads, I mean, you might get up in the 800 range. Uh, we have like, I think 20 different pad compounds to choose from when people call in, uh, I'll pick a compound for them. But on my car, I've been running at 1200, 1200 degrees rotor temperature. And I've got, I've been using a brake, then I was using a brake that uh, the compounding was good between 400 and 1600. So it's right in the middle. So I guess the best brake wear and the best uh, stopping power. And so we've got different different heat ranges. We've got some that'll go from like from 100 up to 1,000. That would be for novice uh, drivers. And then we got one that goes up to 1,200. That could be in, uh, advanced novice, so to speak. And then they start going up from there. We've got, uh, we've got one customer who's running 1,800 degrees uh, on his brakes. We've got pads that go to 2,000. So it, brakes are really important. And then you've got to have, even if that's a stock caliber, you have to have good brake pads if you go on track. But I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not good with stock brakes. So all, all of my cars, the brakes are updated, uh, are upgraded. Uh, I'll use S197 because that's, you know, what we're doing the most of right now. Although we are still are uh, featuring and providing parts and technical support for 99 to 04 Cobras, uh, Mustang Cobras with the IRS. I think we're the only people that, that really are doing much with IRS because I think I understand IRS. I mean, it's, it's nothing new to me when it came out on my racing back in the 70s. So we use S197 because it's simple. But what I typically do is I'll put like a, a big brake kit on the front. And I've been using Bear for like 20 years. That's a great company, great product, and great people. So I'll do a, a brake upgrade. Uh, typically, if it's just a street car, we use like the Pro Plus setup, which is it, it's kind of like a, a street brake it uses oe pads uh so it's kind of a street brake it's I mean, a great street brake package you know it's not really a track package although we had one customer that ran an entire season of h hpd uh with his with those brakes which but we had good pads i mean that's the other trick but you know, i use the uh, the the extreme of this the uh, the six piece the six piston on the front and on the back what i do is i upgrade from the standard rotor to a 14 inch rotor, still retain the factory caliper. Uh, and that, that increases the leverage, kind of like just getting a bigger breaker bar uh, to improve the braking. And the reason I keep the standard uh, uh, caliper on the back is Mustangs have what's called a C-lock uh, differential axle, which means the axles come in, you drop a little C-clip on, they pull back and the, 
this, the pin from the diff comes in between them. Well, invariably, there's a little bit of play. Uh, some cars, it's just very slight. In other cars, it's a lot. Well, if you put a big, big brake package on an 8.8 uh, axle without doing something about that, the, uh, the movement of the axle, what happens is you get pad knockback. Uh, you go around a couple of corners and then you put your foot on the brake and it's, nothing's there. You got to pump the brakes up. Uh, so I don't use big brakes on the back unless we upgrade the Halley Halley fit on the back, which is either adapting for nine inch. The, the biggest thing is just to adapt back in for nine inch axles. And there's uh, there's ends that you can get and we get them strained and just they build the axle and just drop it in and you're good. But you've got to do something about that. Uh, we've we've seen uh, in one of the aftermarket companies on their C-clip replacements, they send two different sizes. One's bigger than the other, but some on some cars that works great. Anyway, the point is you can't upgrade the brakes unless you have a sliding caliper in the back to work with the uh, and knock. But if you put a 14-inch rotor on the back, that's um, that's just about the same as putting a big uh, bigger caliper on the smaller rotor. So I mean, that's the brakes, and then it's depending on you know, where we go from there. I mean, certainly the transmission, the car's got to shift. Uh, I mean, I, I talked about earlier. I don't like fishing for gears. I don't like hitting the wrong gear. Uh, I need I need to feel a shift and make it positive. Uh, so we either put a shifter in, or in some cases, just change the transmission. Uh, and it also um, uses a lot of aluminum drives. So yeah, so you got to get rid of that mass. Uh, you know, ma mass is mass is horsepower. Take more horsepower to turn a lot of mass than turn a little mass. So we go through the drivetrain at the back of the car, thinking, okay, depending on, again, again depending on the application, because everything I do is custom built, uh, pick a rear end ratio that's going to work. Uh, and typically it's going to be in that, for the newer cars with Coyotes, it's going to be 373 range. That seems to be a good ratio. And I always use torsions back there. We started using torsions on the IRS cars or a torsion type uh, differential uh, using uh, torsions on IRS cars and it worked so well, we just started adapting them to the later car and Ford, I think even used them for their, uh, for their race cars all came with torsions and the newer cars with, on the, uh, when you get a uh, uh, performance one package, you get the torsion in the back in 373 years. So, I mean, if the drivetrain has to go through and as far as this power, I mean, it's, if you're building a driver's car, you, know, you don't need you know, tons of power. But for the, for the newer cars, it's just as simple as a good cold air kit, headers, and a, and a free-flowing exhaust, and you can pick up you know, quite a bit of power without cracking into the motor. Uh, we used to build in the late 90s. We built a whole bunch of supercharged Cobras where we use, I, I use a Vortec, a Vortec type uh, uh, centrifugal, and our newer cars were using the, uh, uh, I'll think of it, uh, but anyway, I use centrifugal because on the, the positive displacement, like the Eaton, that sits on top of the motor, uh, that is good for instant torque. I mean, as soon as you put your foot down, bang, you got torque because the pressure's right there. In a Mustang, it's unless you're a drag racer, uh, you really don't need instant torque. It's coming off the corner. I mean, for the most part, they're loose, and if they don't have my rear grip, you know, they're really loose. And you got to wait to put your foot all the way down, otherwise you break traction in the back. Now, having, having a supercharger that has so much torque, you're going to break traction coming off the corner, slows you down. I mean, you might be really, really honking at the end of the straightaway, but you're not going to get off that corner. And the, the, the key to quick lap times is how quick you get off the corner. So with a centrifugal type, it's, it's more like a, a turbo. It's a mechanical turbo, let's call it. And as, you, as RPM spools up, the pressure spools up. So rather than having a whole bunch of, of extra pressure, we're just coming off the corner, it's gonna start feeding in pressure as you go faster and faster. And, and it's pretty transparent and the car just you know, hauls off. So that, that's why I use that type of supercharger. Now the, the uh, positive displacement, like the one sitting motor, that's the one to use for trucks. Absolutely, there's no question about it. So an, anyway, that's the whole power thing. Uh, we've done uh, a bunch of other different things, but then then, again, then you have to, if you make more power, you gotta cool it. So, I, I, so we put drop in a, we've got, we helped the company develop a triple pass, triple flow aluminum radiator. We've got an SN95, 197, and 550 that work beautifully. So, I mean, the outside of the car comes last. Now, um, depending on the customer and what they want, we'll do some things the outside. It's a really fast car, we'll add some arrow to it. But I mean, it's all about the driving experience, all the things I need to put in there to make it work. Now, in the earlier cars, 
if I couldn't find in the market what I needed to make work, we made it. That's where our parts program came from. Uh, the parts pro pro program flows out of the car program. And that's why you don't see uh, you know, tons of different like control arms on our website. It's just the ones that I use. That all the, our website is just the stuff that I use. So it's proven. We have the best technical support. And but it came from car builds, not from a warehouse. Okay. All right. I, know some, I know some companies you know, are a parts company that will pull off the shelf and build a car. And we're just the opposite. We, we build the car and then we take the parts we had to create, even the parts we use, and put them on the shelf because I, I know they work. It's tested and it gives us. I say the best technical support of anybody in the aftermarket is what we sell is what we use. Uh, do we have it? Do we get, get through the whole car? Oh, seating. If it's going to be a track car, uh, you need to have better seats. If the car doesn't come with cars, you need to think about upgrading. Uh, even before the seats, you need to get a good harness. And there are we ha do have some good harness belts that are just a four point that are pretty easy to use because you gotta have to get your butt locked down. And that makes such a huge difference. Uh, and then if, if you're getting more serious and get a better seat, uh, you have to you have to remove the element of having to support yourself while you're driving with your seat. And anybody, that, when they start out, they know they're going around a corner and they have one knee up against one thing, going around another corner, another knee up against something else. You've got to get rid of that. you got to be just 100% focused on driving, but let the seat and the belt just you know, hold you in place. That way you become part of the car. And, and that, that's the key. That, that, that's what I'm always looking for when I build a car. I want to sit in that seat and I want to feel like I am part of the car and the, part, the car is part of me because there has to be, there's a connection. I mean, the car will talk to you. Uh, the car will tell you things that you need to know uh, if you just listen or know what to look for. So that's why it's important to get locked down in the seat. And then some cars will put like a roll, a roll bar in the back, 197, 550s. I mean, from there on out, it gets pretty, you know, pretty customized depending on the customer, but chassis, suspension, wheel tires, brakes, and it's got to drive. It's got to drive like it's got to drive. I mean, it has to be a great driving car. We're at the Heights Performance Car Challenge today. We're just about ready to go out on track and have some fun. This is my latest uh, Gen 4 Kenny Brown Mustang. It features all of our latest advanced geometry suspension, the fourth generation geometry suspension. The car is a blast to drive, works great, and it makes everybody look like a hero. So why don't you come along for a ride? This is the fourth generation of my HGS 4.0 Advanced Geometry Suspension. It started back in 86 and 87 with the championship saloon cars I built. Every generation is an improvement and moves the ball forward. This is the fourth generation and by far the best. I do specific things on Mustang that I wouldn't do with any other car to leverage the strength of the motor, straightaway speed, weakness as a corner. When you come out with a new product that's in your suspension, tell me what goes into that. But it's all about stability and control. We work a lot on the customer experience and making sure the car is comfortable. Easy to drive, take the drama out. years of racing experience and 25 years of building Mustangs and you know it's, I pretty much know what we're going to do before we get there and like I say this is the fourth generation it's by far the best we've got these brakes they're, they're bare but they're special it's their 6R caliper but it's made differently specific for this application as a race caliper the the cool thing is the suspension that's on here the core of it so change the geometry you know, all the pieces that I changed the geometry on are the exact same pieces that Joe Average would get to put in his car and drive the grocery store. The only difference in levels of performance going up is just springs and shocks. It's a uh, coilover, so it's right head adjustable, but the shocks themselves are not adjustable. And I'm a believer in giving the customer as few things to adjust as possible, simply because they really need to be focusing more on their, on their driving skills, improving their driving skills. 
Very exciting to see. It's like running into an old friend. It is in here. It is in here. Can I stand up here? All right. That should be okay. All right, Jim. I was going to lay off the Vix 40. So when, when was the first time you ran with Kenny Brown? When was Give us a little history of you and Kenny Brown. <laughs> well, the first time I ran with Kenny was here. <clears throat> Let's see. I became editor of Muscle Mustangs in 93. That was probably 94 or 95 we came out here for the first uh, Muscle Mustangs Kenny Brown driving school. And um, I think I had a 95 Mustang with all his suspension stuff on it. And then we kept doing them every year after that a couple times too um did them here we did them at uh watkins glen which was a thrill uh the one year watkins i got to drive old blue a uh, real race car on a real race track pretty was, cool huh it was a lot of fun uh we did events at road america which was a phenomenal time i mean you know it just kenny and i go way back you know like most old, old men do well the first time I was on a road course, it was here at Putnam Park, and it was in this car. And that was 15 years ago, maybe? More than that. More than that. So I'm pretty anxious to kind of relive what, uh, and it was in the rain, too, ironically enough. It's going to be interesting to see uh, what this car feels like 15 years later. I'm sure it's still going to be pretty awesome. I had never driven a prepared race car up until that point on a road course, so I was not prepared for all the funky noises and the brake noises and the steering noises and all the uh, <clears throat> the rocks flying off of the sticky tires. And at first, it's a little unnerving. Plus, you're in somebody else's car, and uh, you know once you got used to the car and it feeling starting to feel normal, then everything kind of came together. And with Kenny's instruction. Uh, I actually got a little bit of confidence even my first time. Yeah, I'm pretty time. sure he was terrified riding with me the first time. I think he termed it as scary fast because I could have a little bit of car control, but I really didn't know what I was doing. So I would take a corner correct one time and be fast and then come up to the next corner and have absolutely no idea what I was doing and do it wrong. And then that part was scary. So I was fast and then I was scary. Probably more scary than fast. It was just a lot of fun, you know, to get to see this car here today. It was really it took me took me way back and you know it took me you know, sitting in it it was kind of like old home but I really just had to just get kind of get used to everything again because it's been a while since I've been in a real race car and I guess my one regret is that at one point Kenny and I were talking about actually competing in this car you know me and Evan 
being the drivers and oh, that's actually scary. racing, you know, competition. But uh, that, the last things didn't work out that way. It would have been great. It would have been a lot of fun. Um, right. Then we could have really seen what we're worth. I think the real key though to the Kenny Brown cars is the passion I bring and uh, I actually design the cars, engineer the cars from the driver's seat out. Uh, it's, if it doesn't feel good, uh, if it doesn't put a smile on your face, then uh, you know I haven't done my job. In the mid 80s I was asked to head up a program for a little known California tuner that just got his cars qualified for uh, uh, endurance racing uh, by the name of Steve Saline. One short year later, Kenny Brown and the Saline Mustangs sat on the pole 57% of the time. They won an unprecedented 71% of all races. And after that, Mustangs just started showing up at my door. A Kenny Brown 289 RS Cobra. You can't get any more value for your money than you can with, uh, with Kenny Brown. He won't do anything. That, uh, that won't work in the car. Phew, thanks for joining me, but that was that was a lot of work. I mean, I had a lot to do in this Cars and Coffee this week. So I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you next week.